this is Cinema. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And today we are taking a look at Oranian Burger Canal. New game from Spielworks and Juve Rosenberg. It is a one to two player game and it plays in about one hour. Yeah, so Spielworks, they usually make kind of niche games, mostly with smaller designers. Uh, we know a couple of things they're coming up with now with bigger designers, which is pretty cool. Uh, and Juve Rosenberg is definitely a big designer. And these games are usually kind of a print and done so we don't know how many copies of this is going to be available on the market because Yuli of Spielberg has basically says whatever is left after the fulfillment is what they're gonna sell of it and then probably they're not gonna do anything and spoiler alert this is a pretty fun game so hopefully if you feel like this will be for you after we have talked about the reasons why you might like it then we hope you will be able to get a copy if yeah. you did not back the Kickstarter. In the Rainy Burger Canal, you are building buildings on a grid beside the Oranian Burger Canal. I guess like there's a more theme here usually because Hugh Rosenberg is kind of, he enjoys themes even though his games are themeless. He enjoys like having these historical things like, oh, this is because I used to live there or I went to Norway one time and he made 15 games about Norway, which we like. Uh, but, but, but basically what you are doing in the game is that you are trying to build a better road system, port system, railroad system, canals and buildings that work better than your opponent. I never managed to do that, but that is the goal of the game, to be better than your opponent. So no, I did manage to do that. Yes. And that is what you're going to do in the game. The game is very simply said, a worker placement game, kind of in the vein of the smaller, maybe like the, the one I am, the worker placement spots are the closest to being as small as Newsfjord, mm. but it's even smaller. There's only seven worker placement spots mm. in the game, very few things, very straightforward. We're going to talk more about that soon, but let, first let's dive into the game, how it looks, and all of those things. Yes, the game looks like a typical Spielberg's game. It does. I really like how uh, simplistic it is, yes. but also it is a very, um, like, um, when you fill the board up mm -hmm. with all of the cards and all of the different like terrain um, structures, paths, paths. Yeah, different, yes. uh, kind it of looks um, nice, but also Good. it is e very um, important to keep track of all the mm. what the buildings does, and I yeah. think they uh, absolutely uh, accomplished that. It's Haraliesque, as it always is with Spielworks. Yes, and I, I don't think this is the prettiest game it's made. No, I think it's very it's very plain looking. Yes. For me, I don't care because I get involved in the puzzle and I don't care about anything else. But it's not, you're not gonna see like, if you see pictures of this in this video, that's how the game looks. So you know that if you, if you are a person who need aesthetics in a game, then you're probably not gonna be interested then in this game. Then you're not interested in, in the name. It's not like <coughs> the magical castles of... No, but it doesn't have to be that. You can play Kanban and it looks amazing yes. or, or Lisboa and it looks amazing. Yeah, this is not in that way. I don't care. I like how Horses Carriage looks, so that is that is me. The game does has a, a lot of iconography. Yeah. Uh, they didn't feel intuitive when we saw new cards at first, but they did then... mostly for me because <laughs> I was good at reading it. Yeah, because um, I cheated. Well, you looked at the rule book that helps a lot, but when you understand most of it, then new cards that come up mm -hmm. uh, make a lot of sense to you. I think this is going to be uh, because it, intuitively for me it was kind of easy to read them and guess them. Many games I am like, I have no idea what that means. Most of the cards here kind of had a feeling of what they meant. Yeah. But I think, but, but it was harder for you. Mm. And that's basically just how different brains work. Yes. So I think some people are going to play this and have no problem with it. And some people are going to need to look up the cards a lot of the time. Yeah. So let's talk, a bit about the, let's talk a bit about the rule book. There were some words that kind of disappeared there. Let's talk a bit about the, the, the rule book. That's my new sentence. It's 16 pages long uh, and some of those are like solo rules, uh, but it's, it's a very simple rule book because it's a simple game with many, for, for me, many like uh, similar or, or familiar yeah. mechanisms. Mm. So it was very simple to get through it. There's a lot of symbols, but I'm very happy that they did what they should do 
put all the symbols on the back. The back of the box, no. There is also different decks of cards, as there are many in many Uwe Rosenberg games. And each of those has a little pamphlet where you have all of the cards and all the... So if there's a card you don't understand, it takes you maybe 10 seconds to find it and read what it does. So that is pretty good. Uh, so that makes the game better. Is there a player aid, you might ask? Yes. And it also makes the game better. It's um, German on the one side and English on the other side. Yes. And it basically explains everything you need to know from what the cost is for the different things that you want to build mm -hmm. to all the actions that you can do and also the final scoring. So I'm super happy about this. And you can also learn German because it's the same thing. So if you always wanted to, for example, say, build a route in yes. German, you can now just turn it over and say, Eine Strecke bauen. Yes. And now you can speak German as well, so that's kind of a great addition yes. to the game. Well, yeah. 10 out of 10. Yeah. So the, <laughs> the game has playtime. Yeah, it has. <laughs> like most games. And, and it has a player count. This one yes. is pretty specific. It's one and two. We have played it with two. So the first game took us about one hour, 15 minutes, but the other times we played it, it would have gotten us in down to an hour. And I think an hour for this game is pretty perfect. Yeah. I think you can probably get it down to a little under an hour, but I really enjoy my uh, time with the game in an hour. It depends kind of, I feel like maybe on the car that comes out, some make it a bit more harder to wrap your head around how you're going to plan and stuff like that. And, and so, so it, it really, I don't think, I don't think all games are going to be exactly the same length, but I think around an hour is where it's going to land. Yes. The gameplay is very, like, it's a very minimalistic design. Oh, very. We talked about horses, carriage being a minimalistic, minimalistic design, mm -hmm. and this is kind of like on the lighter end of a medium game. I would say that the, especially rules-wise, I would yeah. say like that the big puzzle that you're doing is kind of, can be mind-bending, especially for me who can't get points, but the like the things you do, the worker placement, there's only seven spaces. Very simple. And like three of those spaces are get resources. Uh, and the others are like build bridges or build cards mm -hmm. or, uh, build, or, build uh, or build routes. So it's very, very simple, like gameplay wise, uh, wise in what you can do with the actions. Mm -hmm. The other thing is all of the abilities of the cards. Yeah. And then you have to think about, okay, what does have the synergies together, when to activate certain things. Mm -hmm. and and also the resource management on um, the wheel that you have maybe seen in a glass road or yeah. aura at labora so that is also a little familiar as well yeah just very briefly to make anything make sense the goal of the game is basically to activate these cars and the game activated can get activated two times one time when you build routes all around them many of the cards has kind of like if you have two canals this will happen or if you have three paths this will happen so you are trying to then build that and then place other cards also in the same path or the same routes then adjacent to it so that you are already ongoing to get that track uh, get that activated in a good way and also you can build bridges and when you build bridges two bridges to a card you're going to activate that card as well the wheel is more similar to the one in glass roll because yeah. it's a you have one wheel each yes where in or at Labore you have like a common wheel, common wheel. Uh, the difference here is that it doesn't like in, in glass roll if you have played it when you get like each one of each resource it's going to move and you lose one of those resources and you get the stuff. Yeah. Here it's not, it doesn't go out automatically. Yes. You can do it one time free at the end of each round or else you have to pay for it. And money is points, but you use it for, for many things. Yes, absolutely. And I think the game in itself kind of sound a little bit dry and boring or yeah. simplistic, but it's really the combination of um, building these routes mm -hmm. and triggering these buildings and uh, also uh, doing this in the order that is the most logical. Yeah. Uh, utilizing the worker spaces, it will fill up with more money if nobody picks that space. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what makes it fun. This is one of those games where it's more fun than the sum of its parts, if you if you understand what I mean. Like this is one where I I kind of look at it unless I feel like, as I said, it shouldn't be fun. Yeah. It shouldn't <laughs> work. I don't know why, but it's just like it's super simple. Like 
as you said, the, the worker placement spots, you get resources or you build things. Yeah. That's it. But you have interaction in that because there's very hard to build enough bridges, for example. There's very hard to build anything like to build the canals and the railroads. There's only one space for mm. that. So it's always this like, okay, when I'm first, what is the most important thing to do? So it's kind of like I, the few spaces makes it a tighter mm. worker placement experience and makes it more more actions more important throughout the game. I I enjoy this game a lot more than I, I think I or I, I felt like I would like every time I play it I'm like okay this is a lot of fun and you're kind of doing the same thing every time you play yeah. but you're doing it differently depending on the cards you get and depending on what the other players are doing. There is, of course, some luck in the game, yeah. but not not a lot. Like, not more than any other game that has a deck of cards. Yeah. Mm. Because you're going to draw cards from a deck of cards. And it yes. might be like, oh, that works perfectly into my plan. Or it might be that doesn't work perfectly into my plan. Yeah. Which also makes it a tactical game. Yeah, I agree. You're absolutely taking tactical decisions and working um, around what you uh, have available in cards uh, for mm -hmm. you. And also uh, reacting to what spaces are blocked by your opponent. Maybe you have to do something else then and do the thing that you wanted to do the next round, for example. I think that the variability in this uh, game comes from the different decks. Of yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, because uh, the game is going to stay, it's going to be the same yes. each time. Uh, so I think that is a great way to have variability in this game. And the, the base game comes with two decks, deck A and B. There's also expansion that comes with deck C, D, E and F. And in one game you're going to use a bit less than half of the cards in one deck. Which means that if you want to, you can play like with a deck, you can play it once, then twice with seeing no different cards, shuffle it together, then playing it one, two times, and it's gonna be different because you have different cards from different decks. And we haven't played it enough to like experience, oh, deck B is different than deck A. And the only thing I saw is deck A was kind of felt like a nicer deck because you got more victory points for cards. Mm. In deck B, there was more like you had to work harder for your points, so they really didn't make it harder to play. But deck A was more like, here you get some points the first time you play the game. Yeah. Here, here you go. Feel good about yourself. <laughs> and then get crushed. <laughs> but so I feel like the game has variability and it, and it is like a head-to-head -head game. Uh, so let's talk a bit about weight. Yes. And who is it for? Uh, it is for one players <laughs> or two <laughs> player groups. Because that's Why the maximum that? player account. Ah. Uh, yes. But I think this is for people who want um, like a simple set of rules or a mm. simple concept but still uh, a good amount of crunch and so there's a lot of game for such a small set of rules i mm. think yeah i'll say that this for me is a better game than attiva was last year yeah. i feel like they are kind of in the same way of course yes. the only, the, mm. this only gets to play with one or two players but if you have to choose one and you are one or two players I would personally choose this. It's drier and, and, and less like ah. thematic, but it has more crunch to it and feels like there's more ways to go and more differentiation in the place. Uh, so, final thoughts. What do you think about Oranian Burger Canal? I really liked it. Sometimes I get a little put off about this, um, what do you call it, this conversion from um, resources yeah. to points, yeah. which is a lot of uh, in this game, like you're using these resources and you're uh, getting points for them or coins for them or turning into cards that you're building or roads. So there's a lot of these conversions. You're getting resources, using it, getting it, mm -hmm. using it. But what ties it all together and makes it interesting is that, okay, I have to think about how I'm building these routes. I have to think about what cards go into that and how I can get a card beside it so I can build a, a, like a bridge over and also... Over troubled waters. Yes, over the troubled, troubled waters. Uh, and also, I really want to have these resources at all times so I can bump the wheel and get more of the premium resources. So all of the package makes it worthwhile for mm -hmm. my part. I really love that it's so simplistic, but it has surprisingly a lot of depth to it. It's yep. not the most like deep game at all, but I think it's really enough to not get major AP moments, but to think about your decisions and feel like they are very meaningful. Mm -hmm. I think this is a really great game. I'm going to rate this an 8. Okay, cool. I don't have as much to say as you did. I think it's a fun game. I enjoy the puzzle. 
I enjoy, basically the reason I don't have as much to say is that I agree with everything you said. Uh, I, I think that this is a great two-player game and uh, it is just that it's very simple to sit down and play, easy to set up, easy to take down, doesn't take too long, not too hard to teach, not too hard to learn, it's just a lot of fun and you're doing, as I said, kind of the same thing each time but it changes this up and, and it's one of those games where I felt like after you played it I just want to play it again because I want to, to understand it and get better. Maybe if, the, if I win sometime, I might not feel that way anymore, but it's one that I just want to go back and, and get better at and, and look at the card combos and trying to find better ways of using the cards that I get. I'm also going to give it an 8. And if anything in this video was helpful for you in any way, it would be really helpful if you gave us a point by, by, by subscribing. Yes. Because that's kind of the equivalent of points. How many points do we have? Uh, and the more points we get, the happier we are, because it shows us that, that you care about the stuff we do and you enjoy it. So give us real life points by subscribing to the channel. Yeah. And that is the end of this video. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Cinema. And you've been watching this video on this channel called Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye bye.